So I'm going to jump way back first, okay. if you're good with yes. this. So you go way back. Um, there was a small little company that reached out to the Third Reich and said, hey, we need 150 participants for our clinical trial. The Nazi regime shipped 150 healthy Jewish women to this uh, this pharmaceutical company to test its products. Literally within six months, there's letters back to the Third Reich from this pharmaceutical company saying, thank you so much for your cooperation. The women arrived in great health and working order. Unfortunately, none of them, none of them made it through the initial phases of our trial. They killed 150 women. We kindly request that you send us another 150 women. That little company became Bayer, which is now a mega pharmaceutical company. Holy and I say that shit. because, right, that was the 50s. It would have changed by now. That was forever ago, right? The world's a different place. We would never allow that today. Jump forward post-World War II. I talked about this on RFK's podcast. Eisenhower had that. Um, Can I pause that? Yeah. You said it was the 50s. It couldn't have been the 50s. Well, the, right? 40s, the 40s, sorry. Okay. And so okay. Eisen, jump forward to, is there a way to turn the volume down on yeah, this? Yeah, there's a button or, or knob right there. There we go. There go. So jump forward to uh, Eisenhower's speech, his uh, famous speech about the military industrial complex. What a lot of people don't realize is there was a second half to that speech where Eisenhower warned the American people about the medical industrial complex. He warned that if we allow private industry to control, monopolize, and profiteer off of health and health care, that they will silo innovation, stifle innovation, and capitalize and monetize innovation. And I would argue that's 100% what we've seen, and it's continuing. So, and the reason I want to walk the public through this is because to understand what's going on, you've got to see the history of how it's happened. So now you jump forward to the 80s, okay? Time and time again, when Big Pharma has had an opportunity to choose left or right, over and over again, they have chose profits over patient outcomes. So 1980s, uh, Bayer launches a hemophilia drug. They inadvertently contaminate thousands of specimens with HIV. They know that they've contaminated specimens with HIV, this drug with HIV virus. What do they do? They have a decision, destroy all of it or ship it to the public anyway. They shipped it into third world countries, Africa and Asian markets and infected 20,000 people with the HIV virus. What? This is the 80s when it was a death sentence. And so I say that to set the groundwork for why would they ban peptides? Look at this from this article. A division of the pharmaceutical company Bayer sold millions of dollars of blood clotting medicine for hemophiliacs, medicine that carried a high risk of transmitting AIDS to Asia and Latin America in the mid-1980s while selling a new, safer product in the West, according to documents obtained by the New York Times. Holy shit. And to everything I referenced, Jamie, because this was something last time, I, I am going to mention a lot of controversial stuff. So I've listed reference after reference after reference on okay. the Ways to Well website. Anything that I reference will be on there as well. Um, but so jump forward, they infect all these people with HIV. Okay. In the 80s, compounding pharmacies and specialty pharmacies and generic uh, manufacturers attempted to create HIV treatment options that were affordable for third world countries. Because at the time, it was like $14,000 a month for an HIV treatment to keep you alive. Nobody could afford that in those countries. So what happens? Does Big Pharma, in a market they can't sell, in a market they can't touch, in a market where they inadvertently infected, or I would say almost knowingly infected 20,000 people with HIV, they then lobby with the US government file and sue the shit out of all of these companies that were attempting to make cost-effective generics. It caught it up in litigation for three years before finally they bent to the will of the American people and the feedback of, of the public. There was outrage over this. And finally, after three years of litigation, Big Pharma said, basically, screw it. Go ahead and give them the HIV. Let them make these HIV meds in these countries that aren't buying our product anyway. And so I just say all this so you know the people we're dealing with, right? And then you jump forward 
to the opioid crisis, which was predicated by the volume crisis of the, I think that was the 40s or 50s. Uh, and so time and time again. And so how does the FDA come to these conclusions? It's because a majority of their funding comes from private industry and a majority of their discussion, their talk track, their influence, their belief systems and their thought processes are being influenced by these companies.